Now back to Just Energy Radio with Dr. Rita Louise. Hello and welcome back to Just Energy Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Rita Louise, and thank you all for staying tuned to the second part of the show. We're continuing on with our shopping for the paranormal, and now we're going to be speaking with David Serrata. Uh, his webpage is lightstreamtechnologies.com. But let me tell you a little bit about David. David Serrata is co-founder of Voice Entertainment director, producer, filmmaker, photographer, author, and public speaker. He is also a well-known space scientist, physicist, ecologist, and spiritual explorer. He has planted over 1.3 million trees in California, spoke in Congress for clean fusion power in 1993, marketed sustainable housing, breakthroughs in oil spill cleanups, solar, wind, and hydrogen technology. So from lightstreamtechnologies.com, my good friend David Serrata. Hi, David. How are you? I'm great, Rita. Um, I'm a father, so I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good thing, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. My, my daughter is two and a quarter, and she's just the light of the world right now. Well, that's she's... wonderful. You know, you just sound so happy, you know, now that you're, oh, you're a daddy. Yeah. Yeah, when you're a daddy and you hold your baby, there's there's nothing like it in the world. When when she falls asleep in my arms, sometimes I just cry. I just the tears just start pouring because the the love is so deep, you know, for you know the, this pure as pure as being is in your arms. There's just nothing like it. Wow. So, How cool. But on top of that, I'm busy um, building new technology uh, ahead of what we're going to talk about tonight. So excellent. Uh, I mean, because we were going to talk about your energy pendants, and so let's, you know, spend a little time talking about that, and we will definitely keep some room to talk about, you know, what you have coming up. Um, and so, um, you know, one of the things that you that you sell or that you have are these energy pendants, and you know, for the listeners, you know, what are they, and and how do they work? Well, you know, I was, in the early days, you know, I'm a hardcore long-time meditator. I've been meditating every day for 33 years now. I'm 51. And when I was first introduced to crystals in the New Age sense, I thought it was all hokey baloney, like, who needs a crystal? And, uh, you know, Paramahansa Yogananda, actually this great Indian yogi, one of the first to come to America, told his students if you wore gems that actually touched the skin, you could mitigate negative effects. And I thought, you know, what is the truth of all this? So, you know, studying what is known as solid-state physics, which is the study of crystals and how crystals actually became miniature amplifiers and usurped um, tube amp um, amplifiers and tube amplifiers in the old days and now with the birth of the transistor, which is a little piece of quartz crystal and germanium crystal in 1947, this little tiny amplifier that was uh, designed by William Shockley, John Bardeen, and Will Bratton is made of crystal, and the reason it became an amplifier is because these physicists in the late 1800s and early 1900s had discovered that crystals had free energy or free electrons, which are, the sort, which are what energy really is, um, floating on their surface, and if you could harness them, you would have miniature amplifiers. And so your Intel computer chip in your computer uh, had used to have a couple of thousand uh, crystal transistors in it, and now it has about three billion crystal transistors in it that are all smaller than you can even see. You need a microscope to see these little guys. And they, they are in our cell phones, they're in our computers, they're in telecommunication systems, they're everywhere. So crystals rule the universe. So I became interested in how I could store vibrational energy in crystal pendants and see if it would affect the body of, of those who came in contact with it. And so we started, I started building an actual technology that could imprint crystal with vibrational memory and keep it there, which is a very hard thing to do. And there's a lot of people out there who have energy pendants that are made of plastic and, and wristbands that, that really don't do, as far as I'm concerned anyway, they don't really do anything. 
But crystal, because it has free electrons that can amplify on a very weak scale, I started measuring the human nervous system's electricity with using a voltmeter in the millivolt setting, which means one thousandth of a volt. And I found um, at trade shows that you know, while we were selling our pendants, um, that everybody had different body voltage, and people who were depressed or had physical illnesses had critically low body voltages, like less than 5 millivolts is really low, and 10 is about an average on the surface of the skin. So when I started experimenting by having people buy and wear these pendants, I got reports of you know loss of pain, less inflammation, uh, clearer dreams, um, and we started making our pendants out of more and more high-quality uh, donut-shaped uh, gems, like you know Brazilian blue quartz and purple epitolite and clear quartz crystal and and amethyst. And um, we started putting in beautiful gems and settings in them. And the business started to take off. People started having more and more experiences with them. So we eventually expanded what we were actually imprinting in the crystals. In the beginning, it was the NASA sound of the sun. The, and the sound of the sun goes back to the ancient Egyptians. It is the definition, according to Robert Temple's uh, work, of logos, the word logos, which is a very, very mysterious word, is the sound of the sun. The Greeks adopted the word logos to mean perfect harmonic vibration, or in mathematics, uh, perfect harmonic ratios, because ratios set up perfect harmonic vibration. So in Christianity, in, in the book of John, it says in the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. Well, Logos became to be known as Word, <laughs> And so it goes all the way back to what the word means is the sound of the sun um, to the ancient Egyptians and the Greeks. So we found that NASA had actually recorded this sound, which you normally can't hear, and they compressed it. And I thought, what uh, uh, the most perfect vibration to put in first to restructure water? And when we... We did early tests with the Russians on, on the film uh, Water the Great Mystery, which our company distributes. They found that when they beamed the sound of the sun at water, it restructured the water to the highest value they had ever seen. Ordinary tap water being beamed by the sound of the sun did this. So we started programming it in our pendants. And, and that's where it all began. And from there, we've expanded to the frequencies of the Pleiades, Sirius, multiple star systems, um, the vibrations of flowers, um, the vibrations of subatomic particles, uh, bliss frequencies. Like, we have a whole menu now you can see on our website. You can, you can get the base frequency in your pendant, um, or, and you can get these custom additional frequencies put into your pendants. So so that's where, you know, we've been going for about three years now. Well, let me, let me ask a quick question, you know, because you're talking about all of these different frequencies. Have, and I'm just playing a little devil's advocate, but did you find that there were some frequencies that you started playing around with that weren't successful or were actually creating kind of a negative uh, result? Well, I mean, I studied, I did all the math on decoding all the star systems, and I also did all the math on the flowers myself. And when we did the flower frequencies, um, people started reporting bliss and ecstasy in their body when I developed a new technology. It's a, actually a wand that transmits through a new invention, a new type of transmitter that I invented using crystal. Um, in the core of the transmitter, uh, we started transmitting into the body. And this is really, really amazing because at first I was just satisfied with selling pendants, but then I said, no, I want to take this further. I want to be able to give somebody a miniature version of a transmitter that they can use on the body for healing. And we had a woman, I, I'm not going to say her name on the air, but she had a daughter, three-year-old daughter, who fell and broke her shoulder and lost all motion in her left arm. 
and no doctor for years could cure her. Her arm was dead, and the nerves, they were talking about nerve grafting. So the mom came to me and said, you know, I heard about the sound of the sun, and you're, I, I had talked about the fact that I could build these transmitters, but I never built one. And so I designed it, did all the math, and had uh, my, uh, my partners actually make it for me cause, as per my design. And I said, look, I can't guarantee you anything, but the sound of the sun is so powerful. Um, it's so powerful on, on restructuring water, it's got to be able to rejuvenate your daughter's nerves. In three months, I get a call that her daughter's arm is moving again. It's been moving, in fact, for over a month and the nerves were coming back to life, and she was just flabbergasted, excited. Oh, my God, how did this happen? And so I realized that what I had built and what I had invented was very different than what Rife, Royal Rife, had invented, is that there are three modes today of getting frequencies into the body. The first, I think, is the most dangerous and that is putting electrodes on the skin through Rife-type devices because they pulse the body at at least 3 volts on the skin, and they send the information into the body that way, which in my opinion is a very low-voltage electrocution of the nerves. The nerves on their own at the surface of the skin are not more than, a, than, than 20 millivolts which is 20 thousandths of a volt. So 3 volts is, is, uh, is 3,000 millivolts, and that's too much power. And the other, and I know people, I actually know one of the godfathers of, of magnetic therapy who's come to me to buy one of my wands because my wands don't work that way. They transmit wirelessly through a magnetic field, and the human heart is a magnetic field, without touching the skin, and therefore they're not electrocuting the nervous system. They're just gently massaging it. But my the field that I've created with this device goes right through the bone, right through the skin. It, it goes right through everything, Where, whereas ultrasound and sound waves only vibrate the surface and a little bit of the core. So the other way that Reif did it was with gas tubes. He, he transmitted frequencies into the body with gas tubes, which is a wireless means of sending healing frequencies into the body, and that was way more successful and more expensive than what people are selling today, which is putting electrodes on the skin. <clears throat> so I started measuring the field of the electrode approach, and I found there was next to no field there at all. So it was... At the most, it could only affect a tiny spot on the body. So Rice had it right. He had it right about transmitting. But my transmitter doesn't use gas. Um, there are some problems with gas tube transmissions. They involve a weak radioactivity, actually. Uh, there are a lot of different gases that um, emit um, different forms of of uh, nuclear radiation, actually, on a very weak scale. So that, that's something you don't want to be exposed to. So th the device I developed is a crystal, crystal oscillator transmitter, and my field is massive, and there's no harmful radiation in my field. So, so now we've expanded this wand to a vent. <coughs> We're actually... Um, using it not only for healing, but for improving the meditative state and accelerating uh, the harmonics of the, of the person who is sitting within three feet of this device. And it's amazing what um, happens to the meditation process when you put the, the person and the consciousness in the presence of a field that is, one, using the NASA sound of the sun, which is the base, and in the Vedas, the ancient Hindu Vedas, the mantra Om that people chant in meditation is the sound of the sun, just <laughs> as in the ancient Egyptians, Logos is the sound of the sun. And well, you know, one of the things so that I've noticed about, uh, you know, like TENS units or other electrical, you know, rife-type machines is that the frequencies they generate 
in my opinion, are they're more square waves. And that's mm-hmm. to me is the part that's like, eh, 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 you know, that that creates discord in the body where if you're using something like a crystal, you know, it's a natural thing and it's it's a natural sine wave energy versus the square wave that to me is very irritating. Yeah, the, the square wave is, if you listen to it sonically in the audible spectrum, it's not pleasant. And it's uh, it has some incredible powers to it, but it's, there's way more advanced square waves that I've decoded mathematically inside of the Great Pyramid that are not the same as the square waves that we use in, in today. See, the way a Rife machine works is it has a tiny, tiny piece of crystal, quartz crystal, that's responsible, it's called a crystal oscillator, for generating the frequencies that come out of the signal generator. They go into either electrodes, or the gas tubes. So the amount of quartz involved is so small that, in fact, it's like the head of a pin amount of quartz that you don't, that's why you don't get a very big field. But with my device, I can pump in a, um, a right frequency and as a sine wave, um, and you can also try square waves, which are interesting. You, you actually have control of that. I generally use, um, multiple, multiple signs that build together that form natural square angles within the sign. Because in nature, there's no single frequency that ever works on its own. It, there's no such thing as a single frequency in nature. So my device uses, in some cases, several hundred frequencies at the same time, but that all belong together in, in a total harmonic symphony. And um, so we're, we're, that's what we're doing now. We have a whole menu, and this is what's really exciting, Rita, is we're now projecting into the body the frequency. See, the Earth is a frequency. It's about 7.8 hertz. It's a little less than that mathematically from the math I did based on NASA data. But we are constantly in the rhythm and vibration of the Earth and the Sun and the distant planets in our system. But if you want to astral project to another star system like Sirius or Pleiades, I have, using NASA data on the dimensions of those stars, I have determined their frequencies and scaled them into the, the, the audible spectrum and the inaudible spectrum. And we started meditating with the Palladian frequencies into our bodies, my wife and I, and it's Utterly astounding what started to happen. Utterly, utterly okay, astounding. Okay, I, I want to hear this because that just sounds. Well, you know, you know, people talk about being possessed. You know, so if you're astral tra- traveling and ending up in somebody else's body, are you being like a possessed? Are you possessing somebody, David? No, 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 no. You're <laughs> you're only. You see, the speed of the human aura was measured by German physicists named Fritz Albert Popp, and, and that's in my movie, Quantum Communication. And so if you can stimulate the aura with the frequencies of a target, like Pleiades, you just show up there, and other astral beings see you there, and they're like, oh, my God, how did you get here? Well, that's because Fritz Albert Popp says the, the speed of the aura is faster than light speed, so we can go anywhere at once as long as you know the harmonic of where you want us to go. So if you pulse the body either through mantra, which is repetition of word, which is vibration, of what an ancient, ancient guru tells you is a particular god or goddess from a different system, then you can use sound waves and meditate for, you know, 50 years and, and have that experience. But with magnetic wave penetration into the body, you can get there within a very short time of practicing. And so you're not possessing anybody else's body over there. You're just you're, showing you're, up. You have your, your own astral, astral body, body and showing up. They see it, and you end up seeing them on the astral plane, and it's really, really cool. a spectacular exchange of shared presence and knowledge um, between beings from different star systems. And we learned from the Pleiadians who started visiting us that they've been doing this for thousands and thousands of years that that is the secret to moving around 
the universe is knowing the harmonics of one position um, and another, which is over enormous distances, like Pleiades are 440 light years away, but in in quantum physics, what is known as quantum entanglement, if you know the vibration of Pleiades, then you entangle it with you here on Earth, then you're already there. And that's how the aura works. The, the aura can copy a digital copy of you and send it there, and you literally, if there's anybody there evolved enough to see you, they will see you. And that that's what happened to us. And... So well, I mean, we can do like that going... already by ourselves, but it just really takes a lot of work in order to get ourselves to, you know, ha- have that kind of light body, be able to separate from the physical body to create that space in ourselves, don't you, th- wouldn't you say? Well, yeah, see, through normal meditation, which I've been doing for, you know, most of my life, Separating from the body is a, is a great conundrum. Like to do it at will is extremely difficult. And I've been trying to figure out what is it, you know, that I can go into a blissful state of consciousness, an amazing peace, and sometimes incredible samadhi states of consciousness, which have multiple levels. But why is it so hard to just leave the body and go to Jupiter? Right? Why is it? Why is it so stuck in this body? And I really understand now that what that is, is the magnetic field that the heart generates and what the brain generates is in synchronicity with the frequency of Earth. And that's what traps us on the astral plane to dream on the Earth plane. Because that's the frequency we live in. That's the only vibration our DNA knows is the frequency of Earth. But when science comes along and realizes you can manipulate consciousness and actually entrap it with certain harmful frequencies, you can create uh, vibrational prisons, if you will, which is something the military has been using for a long time, so that people have a harder time getting out of their bodies and getting free of the matrix. All right, stop there. Vibrational prisons? I, I know our time is short, but what is that? Well, in Claude Swanson's book, The Synchronized Universe, there was an experiment done with Robert Monroe at the Monroe Institute, which a lot of people know about. And Monroe could easily leave his body through the techniques he he did for many years. Right. And they surrounded his sleeping area in a cage of wiring, and he described floating through the wires and going out into space and, you know, no problem. The next night, they put certain frequencies in the wires, and he was trapped. Even Monroe could not get out. Now, what they're chemtrailing on us right now, all this spraying, is they're spraying aluminum. And aluminum is an antenna, a paramagnetic, which means a magnetic, it becomes magnetized when you beam frequencies on it. So they're creating a web of antenna sprayed aluminum to put frequencies to create a, an entrapment around the Earth. This is very, very dark stuff. And with my wands, we've been able to to mitigate those harmful frequencies and get right out of the astral plane uh, many, many times more, many, many times more than if I wasn't using this harmonic technology. I mean, you're talking about I have 33 years of experience in meditation, of vigorous, rigorous techniques, many, many techniques I've been doing every year for 33 years. And I can tell you that, that the one part that is difficult is getting out of body regularly um, and getting away from Earth and getting way out there is extremely difficult. But with the star vibration, what I'm now calling the astral stargate program that I'm opening up, um, it's much easier for a person to get free and get out of this web that that they're trapping us in. So, So I'm actually expanding my wands to produce a table that will allow people to use it for alternative healing and also astral projection. It's going to be a very powerful light pulsing and magnetic wave pulsing harmonic table. And we're coming out with bigger wands and bigger transmitters that can affect whole uh, whole buildings and whole uh, areas for for also for agriculture. We have we have farmers that have used the NASA sound of the sun in California 
one year there was blight, and this blight destroyed all the tomato crops. And this one farmer used the sound of the sun, and he didn't do it with sound waves. He did it a deeper way in the water, and he was the only one who had a bumper crop of tomatoes in the middle of this horrible blight that hit this huge region. So uh, harmonics can be used in agriculture. They can be used to um, fight diseases in plants. Um, we've had amazing uh, testimonies from people who've used it, but I even have a Harvard medical doctor who's waiting to do studies on the device, and I, and I have a physicist in Norway who's testing the device right now on, under the microscope. So this is where I'm heading. I'm, I'm heading into har a new type of harmonic healing, new vibrations that I've decoded mathematically and uh, exploring different star systems for those who feel comfortable projecting their astral self beyond Earth. Cool. And with that, David, we need to wrap it up. So if yeah. somebody wants to get one of these pendants, find out more about it, keep up on the um, advancements that you're making in this technology, where can I send them? Well, you can go to lightstreamtechnologies.com. That's lightstreamtechnologies.com. Or you can write me um, for a catalog ebook that explains the whole thing. Um, David, S E R E D A, at hotmail.com. David Sarita at hotmail.com. So, um, and you can follow me on Facebook too. I mean, I, I have my maximum number of friends, but you can still check out my wall and see what's going on there. So, cool. So, David, I know the music is going to be coming up here in any second. And, um, Way, 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 way too short. We need to have you come back on for an extended visit. Yeah, yeah, that would be fun. Okay. okay. I'm going to let you go. That's David Serrata. His webpage is lightstreamtechnologies.com. And we're going to be back with Dakar Keys after these words from our sponsors. Just Energy Radio with your host, Dr. Reed Louise, will return right after these messages.